Greetings ladies and gentlemen, it is I am the one and only Coco Bandicoot here, and I am from the likes of the Mexi Toys videos here. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to our next new Let's Play for 2024, and this time we are finally coming back into the Klonoa series of games. Because previously we actually did play stuff he relates to Klonoa, was back in 2022, thanks to the forms of Klonoa 2, Dream Champ Tournament for the Game Boy Advance. Despite the fact that we somehow played that game on the emulator, because that was the only option as far as I can probably think about it. So here we are now in 2024, and this time we're now going to be jumped right into Klonoa Fantasy Referee Series. And as far as you probably already know, that this particular game right here is basically a collection of two games fully remastered in gorgeous HD graphics, which contains not only Klonoa Daughter Phantom Isle, but also Klonoa 2, Lunatis Veil. So as a result, no matter what though, this game did first came out in 2022 for the PlayStation 4, PlayStation 5, Xbox One, Xbox Series X slash S, PC Steam, and of course the Nintendo Switch. And this particular game marks the 25th anniversary of the Klonoa series, so yeah, it's a pretty good celebration in regards to the forms of this game's existence. So because of that, the version I'm going to be playing on, similar to the forms of how it does it since in last year, though I'm pretty sure that we've already tackled through Pac-Man World Repack, that's uh, basically the version we're going to be tackling through is the Nintendo Switch version, as you can probably already know, ever since in the intro sequence. So because of that, and also the button icons has been shown up like our nod buttons, so... But uh, before you start the game, we have to go for a serious amount of those informations, which is self-explanatory, but either way though, here we are, into Klonoa Fantasy Reverie Series. So, as I mentioned this before, not only does it include Cl Klonoa Daughter Phantom Isle, but also Klonoa 2, Lunatis Fail. And in fact, no matter what though, is that technically, that uh, for those of you are a Microsoft player, this is actually the first time ever you can finally get a chance to play, Klonoa Daughter Phantom Isle, but also with Klonoa 2 Lunatis Veil for the first time. Especially concerning for the fact that it just never came to Xbox systems until in 2022. So, relatively speaking, I was about the fact that I'm pretty sure that uh, PlayStation owners have already experienced those two games, but uh, usually, relatively speaking, that uh, Klonoa Daughter Phantom Isle did originally came out on the PlayStation back in 1997. And then meanwhile for Klonoa 2, Lunatis Veil, vale, did originally came out on the PlayStation 2 in 2001. And it's also worth noting for us that technically speaking for Klonoa Daughter Phantom Isle, that this is actually the second time for Nintendo platform that it does manage to contain Klonoa Daughter Phantom Isle, because obviously they technically already remastered the game on the Wii, which you probably already know what that is. And for those of you following for our channel, since in, well, a couple of years or so. So because of that, I think relatively speaking, though, this is actually the first time ever for Nintendo platform system they finally get a chance to play Klonoa 2 Lunatis Veil vale for the Nintendo platform for the first time. So yeah, that's actually pretty swell because it was originally going to be able to be ported over to the GameCube at one point, but of course it was cancelled due to the forms of space limitations for the disc or something, or perhaps even maybe because of the forms of some complications are involved. So. Yeah, basically speaking though, is about the fact that as you can tell, we dive straight into the first game of this compilation, and that's what appears to be Klonoa Daughter Phantom Isle, just in case we can able to go for those two games in a chronological order. So, let's hear this familiar jingle. Man, I love this jingle. It never gets old. Anyways though, so here we go onto the forms of the title screen in Klonoa Daughter Phantom Isle, in some cases in Klonoa Fantasy Reverie series version. And as you can see, the actual graphics itself looks a lot more detailed, and on top of that, a lot more colourful this time around. And, I don't know about you, but I'm pretty sure that particular familiar scenery right there looks very similar to the forms of how it does on the Wii version. I mean, relatively speaking, I was just about the fact that we were able to still hear that wahoo! and stuff like that. Oh shoot, that's the intro, so I might as well skip that. So, back to the jingle. Huzzah. So, anyway, without verbal ado, let's jump right into this, and because of that, uh, before we dive into the actual game itself, we need to see the actual settings first, 
So, relatively speaking, uh, when it comes to the settings in this entire game, say it applies with the forms of uh, Klonoa 2, uh, Lunatis Veil, vale, then obviously we can able to figure out the forms of specific settings, including there is now the auto-saving feature. So because of that though, every time when if you do complete certain stages, obviously the game now auto-saves. So because of that, no need for memory cards or anything else like that. So. Anyways, I think this particular control types might be good for me, because obviously I'm pretty much using my Switch Pro controller from now on, so that way I can able to jump with the B button, and then use the Y button to... to use the wind bullet, so... But uh, either way, and as you can tell, we've now ended up in the file selection screen, and as we expected, much like the Wii version, obviously we do have three save slots. So because of that, unlike the forms of how it does on the PlayStation 1 version, where we got ourselves some chimp packed full of save files, usually a maximum of, let's just say, 16 save slots, which is pretty insane if you ask me. But... Either way, let's just jump right into file number one. Now, before you dive into the actual game, on the other hand, there was actually that new feature that was actually introduced in this version this time around, and that's what appears to be the difficulty selection. Like, basically, we can always start the thing off as in both easy or normal mode. There's technically the third mode, which I'll explain more details about that if we continue proceedings for this game. So because of that, for example, there's the forms of the easy difficulty, which does allow you to able to give you not only five hearts, just like the forms of how it does on the Wii version, but also the actual damage has been uh, reduced to uh, one and a third reduced, and also, get this, you get infinite lives. However, if you ever played this particular game on normal mode, you're able to actually guarantee it, able to realize that we're going on to PlayStation 1 version. Like, for instance, we got ourselves three hearts, and on top of that, if you get hit, you lose a half of your health, likely also for that particular one and a half reduced damage, and of course, we're able to have a life system. So because of that, for this particular game itself, Klonoa Daughter Phantom Isle, I'm obviously going to be focusing on normal mode, because I know for a fact that I was originally trying to able to go for a harder challenge by going through the third difficulty setting, but I think something tells me I do need to unlock that. So because of that though, you don't get the third difficulty right from the get-go, so you have to able specifically try to unlock it, I think in order to do that is that you have to complete the game on normal mode, I'm pretty sure. So it might take a bit while to able to try to able to unlock that, but let's not worry about this too much because relatively speaking now, we're about to jump right into the opening cutscene to Klonoa Daughter Phantom Isle, but this time in gorgeous HD. By the way, something's worth noting for, every time when you start the level up, 
Um, sometimes in the loading screens, by the way, it actually gives you some um, hints and tips here and there. So just to ensure for the fact that you pretty much know exactly what these items are going to be for and how the game actually plays out to be. So, and also you do realize about the fact that the actual cutscenes in this version plays pretty similar to the forms of how it does on the Wii version. Except your noticeable differences this time around though is that, as you can tell, that they now speak in Phantom Mile language. And in addition to that, the actual translation on the text box, as you can see, is actually a very similar comparison to the PlayStation 1 counterparts. So, meaning about the fact that we might be able to uh, see that familiar dialogue right there, despite the fact that they only speak in uh, Phantom Mile language. But that's okay, because even then, my goodness, the visuals look absolutely colorful this time around, which I'm pretty sure about the fact that most people complain about the forms of the Wii version, where basically the visuals on the Wii version might tend to be a little bit duller, but because of everything else though, it's about the fact that I fully, fully appreciate about the fact of how this particular version of the game looks now, and, relatively speaking, though, is about the fact that I'm very glad to be coming back onto Clunoa series of games. Although, despite the fact that there was technically some other games I would like to tackle through, in regards to the forms of Clunoa, like, for example, there was the only RPG game, but it was Japanese exclusive, and there was also the ones on the PlayStation called Clunoa Beach Volleyball, but I'm not very great at the forms of Beach Volleyball game, I must be honest here. Especially concerning for the fact that it's all depending on the forms of the RPG, MG for that particular target cursor. So, yeah, here we go on to the forms of Klonoa Daughter Phantom Mile again, and I think, fundamentally speaking, though, this is our third time playing for this game, believe it or not, because obviously, ever since in 2019, which, jeez, it's been like five years ago, since we did somehow did done, not only one version, but two versions of Klonoa Daughter Phantom Mile. One on the PlayStation 1, the other one for the Nintendo Wii, and we now come to the third version of the game, but this time on the modern hardware. For, you know, for the sake of the forms of the modern systems, ranging from, you know what I'm saying, PlayStation 4, PlayStation 5, Xbox One, Xbox Series X slash S, PC Steam, and Nintendo Switch. So, pretty insane if you ask me. So they've managed to be able to bring up some multiple, multiple versions of certain games nowadays. Although, it's almost come to a point where basically PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X is now going to take over for the majority of the future games and onwards, specifically with Dragon Ball Spiking Zero, but that's besides the point, so... But uh, yeah, you do realize about the fact, as I mentioned this before, the actual cutscenes plays out pretty similar to the Wii version, like the animations are very similar, because I know for a fact that for one thing, they no longer become sprites, so... Understandably so, but regardless of everything else though, it looks so much more nicer this time around. And, I don't know about you, but I'm pretty sure that Klonoa is actually uh, feels a bit a lot more expressive this time around though, compared to the forms of how it does on the Wii version sometimes. Well, in some scenes anyway, but uh, regardless of everything else though, it's about the fact that you get the idea of how this is gonna... brings out to be, but still. So, uh, a few things I want to explain before we're able to get onto the actual news and discussions alike. I figure I'm also able to try to talk over for these cutscenes this time around, because obviously they played exactly like the forms of the original, although technically speaking though, the Wii version to be exact, but it's just about the fact that the actual in-game text dialogue is actually based off in the PlayStation 1 version, which I know for a fact that for what I've heard, that uh, Piglet has already read every single dialogue in the original PlayStation 1 version, so I don't feel like trying to able to speak about that again. Well, it's kind of an uh, obvious thing, no matter what, though, because unlike Twilight Sparkle, I'm not exactly the huge expert on reading, but I'm doing pretty decent at reading. So because of that, though, yeah, I haven't exactly got thoughts about it. So either way, so as you probably already know about the fact that, like I said this before, this game did uh, somehow came out on, um, you know, 2022, specifically Klonoa Fantasy Reverie series. And I believe um, Sonic did somehow told me that he was very excited about the fact that when this game did somehow first announce, Thanks to the forms of uh, sometime in 9th of February in 2022 Nintendo Direct. And whenever he sees uh, Klonoa in action, he was like, Oh my goodness, Klonoa is back! Because, yes, truth be told, it's been a very long time. 
since we've last heard about relates to the forms of Klonoa ever since on the Wii remake of Klonoa Daughter Phantom Isle. And truth be told, it is so nice to see him back. So because of that though, because I will admit though, I absolutely really enjoyed playing the Klonoa games. Even though, mind you, no matter what though, it's about the fact that some parts can be tricky sometimes, but I honestly don't care, because obviously no matter what though, everyone else seems to be very happy to see Klonoa back again, after a massive, massive hiatus ever since injury forms at the end of the 2000s era. So, because it's kind of strange about the fact that we never actually seen Klonoa during the forms have been a 2010s era, unless if you don't account the forms of the PlayStation 3 downloadable version of the, the original game on a PSN store. But because of everything else though, it's just about the fact that, oh, are you kidding me? I was off by one draw left, so I can able to actually get myself my glorious gold medal on the top left corner. Ah, uh, oh well, beggars can't be choosers, I guess, and thus not to mention though, I think it's just for bragging rights sake, so either way though, yeah, that basically does it for, uh, Vision 1-1, now let's go to move on to Vision 1-2, where we're gonna be exploring into the caves, so, yeah, no, nothing else to say about that, I guess, so, uh, and, uh, something's worth noting for is about the fact that I love the UI in this version of the game. Because, obviously, no, no matter what, though, it actually shows you how much hearts you have, and on top of that, how much jewels you could be collecting. And on top of that, how much lives you've, uh, accumulated. And not to mention, though, it actually shows you the forms that specific, uh, outlines that it's actually kind of similar situation as the forms of not only Super Mario Galaxy 2, for uh, the Comet Medals, and it's also with the Star Coins in not only New Super Mario Bros, but also with New Super Mario Bros Wii, New Super Mario Bros 2, New Super Mario Bros U, and as well as New Super Luigi U as well. Even the Star Medals from Super Mario 3D Land, and Green Stars in Super Mario 3D World, that uh, basically, if you manage to try to find those specific uh, citizens right here, like we just somehow found two pieces of the citizens already, and as a result, much like the forms of how it does on the original version, including the Wii version as well, this is going to be the 100% playthrough. The only time exception being is of course getting every single jewels or crystals to be more specifically because I know for a fact that well, it's kind of unfortunate though about the fact that I was off by one specific jewel left so I can able to actually decide able to claim the actual crown in journey forms of one of the levels which is Kind of unfortunate in my part, but still, beggars can't be choosers, I guess. And not to mention, though, like I said before, it's just for bragging rights, I suppose. Because, relatively speaking, though, what if I did manage to able to check out on the PlayStation 4 version of the game, including the Xbox One version as well, that there aren't any uh, trophies or achievements, something related to the forms of obtaining those specific... Uh, Crystals or jewels to be exact just because no matter what though They're just for bragging rights as far as I'm usually unaware So relatively speaking though when it comes to difficulty when it comes to able to achieving certain trophies and achievements It's gonna be a total cakewalk especially concerning for the fact that you just simply just try to find um, Specific stuff and complete certain levels complete certain bosses you name the rest so But either way so as you know, doubt by now is about the fact that also I've I honestly forgot to mention about this as well that depending on what difficulty you decide to choose, uh, if it's either on easy or normal mode, uh, I believe if you ever played this game on normal mode, it doesn't matter if it's either on uh, Daughter Phantom Isle or uh, Lunatis Fail. I believe if you manage to be able to select the game on easy mode, the wind bullet is actually in a longer range. Whilst if you ever play on normal mode, it is actually very similar. Um, range as the forms have been the originals, like the original PlayStation game on uh, Daughter Phantom Isle and the original play PlayStation 2 version for Lunatis Veil. Vale. So, yeah, you get there just a bit. So, and also, unlike the forms of how it does on the Wii version, thankfully there's no gimmicky motion controls here and there. So, relatively speaking, I was about the fact that, well, again, I'm currently going to be using the Switch Pro controller just because of not only for its comfortable factor, but it's also about the fact that I love using that controller for the majority of the Nintendo Switch games, apart from two exceptions, which is, of course, Super Mario Party and WarriorWare Move It, just because both of those games usually heavily relies on on uh, Joy-Con controllers for multiple factors, so, but uh, anyway, so, um, yeah, let me know in the comments down below for the question of the day, 
What was your first impressions for the Sega Thief forms of Klonoa Fantasy Referee series? That's, um, at first glance though, is about the fact that I've actually really enjoyed this game. Not just because of how the fact that it's so nice that Klonoa decides to make its grand return after that massive hiatus, but it's also about the fact that what's even cooler is that assuming if you do have the Steam Deck or the Nintendo Switch, then obviously you can able to experience both of those games on a go, so that way you don't need to rely on the forms to stay indoors all day. So yeah, that's actually pretty swell, especially concerning for the fact that I obviously still enjoy uh, Klonoa Daughter of Phantom Isle is one of the greatest PlayStation 1 games ever made back in the day, in Journey Forms of in 1997, but relatively speaking though, I still have no idea why does the game does get a little bit more pricey these days, even on the original uh, PlayStation 1 version of the game nowadays, which I'm not exactly sure why that seems to be the case. Oh yeah, I also want to mention though is about the fact that yes, today's day is of course the is the 13th of February today, in some cases in 2024 today, and for those of you probably wondering of why my commentary feels a little bit slightly awkward at times, it's because I'm stuffed. And because of that though, today's day is of course the pan pancake day. So no matter what though, I'm pretty sure that me and Crash Bandicoot did somehow manage to eat a lot of pancakes. So now I'm pretty sure that Spyro the Dragon also tries out certain pancakes as well. So relatively speaking though, I think my favourite combination when it comes to pancakes I somehow have. And that's what appears to be the golden syrup. And maybe potentially with the forms of some sugar as well. And I'm also able to try some different combinations in the future. I mean relatively speaking though, it might be a bit too late for now to try some of those. But that's only just no matter what though, it's about the fact I was basically just, you know what I'm saying, I'm stuffed, you know? Oh, and speaking of like, you know, Nintendo Directs related, um, did you guys know about the fact that it's been 10 years ago since when uh, the 13th of February 2014 Nintendo Directs was actually takes place? Like, jeez, it's been a decade old. Especially that I believe that Sonic did somehow tell me something about the fact that, well, he did remember back then that uh, when uh, they've mentioned something more related to the forms of not only Mario Golf World Tour, but also with the forms of Super Smash Bros. 4, the Nintendo 3DS, and the Wii U, and because of that, they do remember about around that time when they revealed uh, Little Mac uh, joins the fight, and on top of that, there was also the... Uh, more information about the forms of Kirby Triple Deluxe, as well as the forms of NES Remix 2, Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze, certain Game Boy Advance games arrives on the Wii U Virtual Console lineup, which I think is actually a pretty cool deal while looking back. And on top of that with Mario Kart 8, as well as uh, Bayonetta 2, and on top of that with the forms of Shuffle Knight, and a whole bunch of stuff I can probably think about on top of my head. So, yeah, while looking back on it though, it's actually, uh, Pretty cool direct while looking back on it though. And also, did you know it's been uh, five years ago since in Journey Forms have been the 13th of February Nintendo Directs, but this time in Journey Forms of 2019. And I believe Sonic did somehow tell me something as well that uh, he do remember about the fact that with this massive hype overload in regards to the forms of the announcement of Super Mario Maker 2 as well as The Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening Remake, and my goodness, that was actually a really good direct while looking back. On top of that, there was also with the forms of uh, Captain Toad Treasure Tracker DLC, in addition with the forms of two-player support was actually added. And uh, on top of all that stuff though, we do remember around that time where we got hyped about the forms of Super Smash Bros. Ultimate lineup, and on top of that with... Uh, Yoshi's Crafted World not only has certain features while looking back, but also with the demos being playable, so... But either way, here we go with the forms of the first boss in Klonoa Dalton Phantom Isle, and this guy is really easy, especially noticeable concerning for the fact that we've already experienced this boss before, not only on the original PlayStation version, but also with the forms of the Wii version as well. So, generally speaking, I was about the fact that you have to able to rely on just trying to able to carry this enemy around, and you can able to toss the actual enemy as a projectile right back right onto its back. And thanks for that, Joker, for able to give us a hint. Um, as soon as when the fight starts, so. But still a relatively easy fight, especially concerning for the fact that, again, this is our third time experiencing the entire game, except this time in gorgeous HD visuals, and on top of all that stuff, that was about the fact that it's so nice to go back to Klonoa again, 
Because I felt incredibly bad not to do this game in last year, because obviously no matter what though, we've been busy lately, especially concerning with all that particular... You know what I'm talking about, the first RPG we somehow tackled, which is of course Super Mario RPG, specifically on the Super Nintendo version, not the Switch version just yet. But uh, either way, we somehow managed to get ourselves a Moon Pendant that will be useful for something, so uh, anyway though. So as far as I can probably say about any of those specific stuff in mind, well, I think it's probably best if we let uh, Maxi will mention more about um, other stuff worth noting for until specifically when he goes back on to Sonic the Hedgehog 2006. So, and obviously if you couldn't tell already, if you're following for our channel already, the actual fact about Klonoa, he was actually a cat. So, well, for those of you who already know about that, if you ever played Klonoa 2, Lunatis fail. So because of that though, you see what I mean, as soon as we're able to actually continue playing this, enjoy new forms of not only on Tuesdays, but also on Thursdays as well. So generally speaking, I was about the fact that it might be felt a bit lengthy for this entire Let's Play of Klonoa Fantasy Reverie series. In fact, it's actually going to be even longer compared to the forms of how it does it on the original counterparts, including the Wii version of Klonoa Daughter Phantom Isle, because obviously we're doing two games into one, so it's actually a very similar situation as the forms of not only Super Mario All-Stars, but also with Super Mario 3D All-Stars, and also say plus with the forms of Sonic Origins as well. So, generally speaking though, it's going to be a quite of a heck of adventure when it comes to tackling those two games in that specific format, so... But uh, either way though, and I think that pretty much takes care of the forms of Vision 1-2, so uh, yeah, pretty self-explanatory for that particular world. So with that being said though, is that we got the endings of this point right here. So join me next time for more of Let's Play of Klonoa Fantasy Reverie series while we're playing through Klonoa Daughter Phantom Mile, is that we're going to be jumped right into the next level, which appears to be Vision 2-1, that we're going into the forest. So I'll see you guys until on Thursday. Later fellas.